If you're playing to make a dress of plaid, you'll find yourself spending more time in planning and cutting the fabric. Since this will be true, I'd like to use this demonstration to show you some of the special problems which arise when we work with plaid. So that you will know more of what we're talking about, I'd like for us to take a look at a dress where the plaids have been effectively used. Here is Julia Faltonson. Let's take a closer look at her dress. The plaids are well matched down the center front seam. And they form a self trim by bringing one color to the surface with tucks. The stripes match right straight across the front blouse too. And they come together nicely at the shoulder and match right on down the sleeve as they do here in the collar. Now here are some of the things we need to know in order to match plaid equally well. The first thing we need to know is that some plaids are easier to match than others. This is an easy one. I've cut a square out to show you that it will match this way It'll match this way, and we can tip it over, and it'll match this way. This is what we call a balanced plaid. The top is the same as the bottom, and the right is the same as the left. And the underside is the same as the top side. This is the easiest plaid to use. And here is one of the easiest patterns to use with plaid. This skirt is cut on the square of the design. It's merely a tube gathered in at the waistline. The pieces are rectangular. By matching notches on the pattern with the same lines in the plaid, the designs will match perfectly at the seam lines and run continuously around the skirt. This pattern has a flared skirt. The side seams are straight with a grain line, but the front seams will be on the bias. skirt will look like this. It can be laid out the same way as the first. By matching the notches to the plaid on the side seams, the design will automatically meet at the front seam at a graceful angle, this way. Let's lay out the skirt pattern to show you how it will go. This piece of pattern has been laid on a single thickness of the fabric and lined up with the grain. We want to locate the side seam of the pattern and find the notch located in it in relation to the crosswise lines of your plaid. Now this is the top of the pattern, so the notch comes to the lower line in this design group. Since this is a balanced plaid, we can turn this piece of pattern upside down to save material. Then we want to line up the grain by letting it follow one of the lines in our design. And you can see that right through your pattern. This is the top of the pattern. And here is the corresponding notch that we want to place along the lower line of our design group.
and then we'll pin. Lining up your design in this way is what gives us a well-matched plaid at the side seam. Our next step is to double this fabric under so the design will fall back on itself. You can also measure off this turn under against your pattern, roughly. Then fold and match the designs, as I'm going to do. Then finally pin the pattern in place. This would lessen the risk of tearing the pattern. Match the plaids along the selvage on both sides and pin. And then to be sure that the design is matching all over this area, put a pin down at one of the cross lines and check through to the underside. Be sure they're matching and pin it. And do this in enough places that you're sure it's matching all over. And then you're ready to pin the pattern down through both thicknesses of fabric and cut it out. When you fold and match your plaids carefully, you will have an interesting and even design down the center front. Here's another balanced plaid. This is a printed one with a right and a wrong side. However, I can fold it and cut it very much as I did the other balanced plaid. But this one is printed off grain. So I suggest that you use it for something other than a dress. And here's a closer look at another plaid. It will match this way, but not this. It will match this way, but not the other. It's unbalanced. However, it's a woven plaid like the first, so we can use the back side too. This gives us a natural situation which can be used along a bias seam line. You cannot fold it the same way as a balanced plaid but you still can get a pleasing effect by using both sides and cutting each piece separately. It will take more time and planning. Here is another unbalanced plaid that is nubby on one side. The design cannot be made to match symmetrically on a bias seam as with the unbalanced reversible plaid you saw a minute ago because one side of the fabric would be wrong side out. However, we can use it with stripes running horizontally around the blouse and skirt. Match up the strong or feature lines at the seams. The vertical stripes won't meet nicely at the seams, but the stronger lines will match and carry the design. And now let me show you how to place a blouse pattern on this fabric, making use of these strong feature lines. I've decided to put the fold line of the back on this heavy line on my plaid, allowing enough fabric to fold under for the other half of the back. Then we want to notice where the double notches come in relation to the crosswise stripe of the plaid. And place the sleeve so that the double notch 
comes in the same relationship, those crosswise stripes. Center the sleeve on the heavy line, put it on the grain, and then notice where the single notch comes in relation to the crosswise stripe. Then place the front of the blouse so that the corresponding notch will be in the same relationship to the design. We start with the piece on the fold, and the double notch determines where the sleeve should be placed. Then the single notch in the sleeve determines where the front pattern should be placed. Of course, after you've cut out the blouse front and the sleeve, you'll need to take those two pieces of pattern and place them on another part of the fabric and cut a second set. And you'll need to take time for planning the matching of the plaids in that second set just as carefully as you did the first. Be sure to turn those pieces upside down for the opposite sleeve and front. And then design details that are well planned add much to the appearance of a dress. For instance, here at the neckline, this keyhole is outlined with a heavy stripe of the plaid. If you want this heavy line to outline the detail, then place your pattern so that the seam line will come right to the edge of that heavy line. These are basic suggestions that I've given you for working with plaid, but they should give you a background of understanding so that you can solve other problems as they arise.